welcome you here uh, uh, this evening as we gather together for this Monday and Thursday service. And uh, we'll continue our theme uh, from the Armor of God series, uh, looking at Ephesians chapter 6. Tonight we'll follow the order of service as printed in your bulletin, and we begin with the opening sentences. Moses said to the people, Fear not, stand firm, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to be silent. We sing our opening hymn, hymn 436. someone to devour. The weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand firm. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart to confess our failures to fight the good fight of faith. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I confess to you that I have not always fought the good fight of faith. I have failed to speak the word in love. I have not lived a righteous life. I have not always shared the gospel of peace with others. My faith 
has faltered with doubts and uncertainty. I have not always lived confidently in my salvation, and I have neglected your word. Nor have I always prayed as often as I ought. On account of your Son, Jesus, forgive me my sins and equip me with your heavenly armor. Take heart, brothers and sisters in Christ. In John 20, Jesus has promised, If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Therefore, in the stand by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Your sins are forgiven, and God gives to you his honor. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose dear Son on this night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive these gifts thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life, and who now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May be seated. Our Old Testament reading for us this evening comes to us from Jeremiah chapter 31. Begin reading with verse 31. The time is coming, declares the Lord when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their forefathers when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt, because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God, and they will be my people. No longer will a man teach his neighbor, or a man his brother say, Know the Lord, because they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their wickedness, and will remember their sin no more. Here then also, our epistle reading this day from Ephesians chapter 6 beginning with verse 10 finally be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes for our struggle is not against flesh and blood but against the rulers against the authorities against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after having done everything, to stand firm. Stand firm, then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, Keep alert, keep on praying for all the saints. Pray also for me, that whenever I open my mouth, words may be given to me, so that I may fearlessly make them known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. This is the word of the Lord. 
Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. And the Holy Gospel this for us this sacred night comes to us from Luke chapter 22. We begin reading with verse 39. Jesus went on as usual to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, Pray that you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down, and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. When he rose from prayer, he went back to the disciples, and he found them asleep, exhausted from sorrow. Why are you sleeping? he asked them. Get up and pray, so that you will not fall into temptation. Thus far, the Gospel of our Lord. We join together in confessing our common Christian faith as we use the words of the Nicene Creed, and you will find those printed on the inside back cover of your hymnal. We confess together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten His Father before all worlds, God of God, light and light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated for our next hymn. Thank you.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, throughout this season of Lent, we've been meditating upon the various pieces of armor that God gives to us in our battles. Battles not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. These pieces of armor are described for us in our epistle reading today from Ephesians chapter 6. Today we'll continue our exploration of Ephesians 6, but tonight we will not be looking at a piece of armor, but rather something that God gives to us along with these pieces of armor. Prayer. And so using the words of our epistle reading today, Ephesians 6, especially verses 18 through 20, I'd like to consider this aspect with you. Indeed, as we live our lives on this earth and as we face a very powerful enemy, Satan and his demons, our sinful nature and a broken world in which we live, it is important that we engage this enemy and engage in this warfare armed with the gifts God gives to us. For we are not strong and mighty enough on our own to face this enemy. We grow spiritually dull and tired. But God gives to us his grace. And so this evening, I especially want to focus on verse 18 of our text and consider with you the four alls of prayer. Pray at all times. Pray all prayers and supplications. Pray with all perseverance. And pray for all the saints. First of all, let's consider praying at all times. Jesus, our warrior and champion for us, indeed, showed us how this is done. Oftentimes throughout his ministry, he would go off by himself to a solitary place and pray to his Heavenly Father. In fact, even here tonight in our Gospel reading, we see Jesus in that grove of olive trees in Gethsemane, engaging in prayer. He took Peter, James, and John with him. He invited them to stay and stay alert and keep watch while he would pray. And he went to his heavenly Father and he prayed this prayer which I suspect you know so very well. Father, if it is possible, take this cup from me. Be yet not my will, but yours be done. Jesus was going to do battle with the rulers, the authorities, the powers of darkness and evil. And as he began this battle, and as he soon would be handed over to his enemies, be beaten, be crucified, as he would be engaging in a spiritual warfare for our eternity, Jesus did so armed with prayer. Oh, as true man, Jesus knew all that was going to happen and he felt some trepidation about it. And so he engaged in prayer. Certainly if Jesus, the Lord God, felt some trepidation as he was about to face the trials that were before him, it really shouldn't surprise us that as Christians, we might feel a little trepidation over the trials and difficulties that we encounter as well. And it's not even just a matter of the battles of our physical lives here, of flesh and blood. It's the battles that take place in our hearts, in our souls, in our minds against the spiritual forces of evil. 
and like Jesus, and even more so, we need to be armed with prayer. But like the disciples in Gethsemane, we may grow tired and fall asleep. In our sinfulness, we may not always pray as often as we ought. We may pray maybe only at mealtime or maybe bedtime. Maybe prayer sometimes falls by the wayside. Maybe an entire day goes past without being in prayer. But God tells us to pray at all times. The psalmist in Psalm 50, verse 15 said, Call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver you. Psalm 118, give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and his love endures forever. In all times, God calls us to prayer. Just like the apostles prayed for courage. In Acts chapter 4, we're told that after Peter and the apostles were, were threatened with harm if they continued to preach about Jesus, met together with the church and they prayed that God would give them courage to be faithful and to proclaim the message in spite of the trepidation that they felt in their lives. Pray at all times. God teaches us to pray for forgiveness, to pray for the conversion of others. If you give a gift to someone, pray for the person that you're giving that gift to. When you're going to work, pray for your co-workers. If you're traveling to work, pray for those that are on the road with you, traveling, going to their destinations. Pray at all times. If you hear an ambulance, a fire truck, pray for those who are in need of those services and Pray for those who provide them. Pray on every occasion, mealtime, bedtime, when on vacation, when rising in the morning and going to sleep at night. When you send mail to someone, pray. Pray for those that deliver that letter or that package and pray for the person receiving it. Pray. <laughs> at all times. Secondly, we're to pray with all prayer and supplication. We see Jesus prayed on many different occasions. He prayed for healing. He prayed a blessing over food and thankfulness for it. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he prays. Father, if it's possible, take this cup from me, but not my will, but yours be done. He prayed for Peter and the disciples. Jesus knew that Satan desired to devour Peter. And so he prays that Peter again, after he falls, after he stumbles, again he would find the grace of God and that the Lord would protect him. Pray at all times. Why, even on the cross, we see our Jesus praying for his enemies. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Jesus prayed all kinds of prayers and supplications. In our sinfulness and in our short-sightedness, we may oftentimes have only one kind of prayer. Lord, help Get me out of this mess. Or maybe, come Lord Jesus, or now I lay me down to sleep. Oh, certainly there's nothing wrong with those prayers, and in fact, it's even good that we say those prayers. But God invites us to pray all prayers and supplications. We can pray those prayers that are eloquent, well thought out, well said. And we pray those prayers that are, are a little rough and quickly spoken off the cuff. 
maybe the words aren't perfect, maybe we stumble through them. Other times we might pray prayers that are, that are written, written by someone else, but yet they express so well what's upon our heart. There are many prayers like this. In fact, in the portals of prayer, if you've ever noticed in the back, there's usually a section there of prayers for all kinds of different occasions and days. Pray with a variety of concerns, requests, and give thanks. Pray with all perseverance. Thirdly, as we pray all prayers and supplications, we pray with all perseverance. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus asked his disciples to keep watch. And then Jesus went on and he prayed and the disciples fell asleep. It happened three times, and each time our Lord came back and he, and he found his disciples sleeping. But Jesus continued to pray. He prayed with perseverance. He remained faithful where we have failed. Oh, like the disciples, it may be easy to grow dull and tired and sleepy, sometimes in a literal way. Have you ever fallen asleep saying a prayer? I have. And maybe that's not all bad. But there's a far greater danger of that spiritual dullness and apathy that we can fall into. Maybe we grow lax in our prayer life. Maybe a day goes by and, and we don't even say a single prayer. Maybe prayer becomes more of a, of a last resort and the first thing. Thankfully, Jesus remains faithful for us. He prayed with all perseverance, even when his disciples failed, even when his disciples fell asleep, Jesus continued to pray. Oh, it's important that we pray regularly. And I believe it's important that we're intentional about it. It's good to set times aside for prayer. In Daniel chapter 6, we learn how Daniel had regular times of prayer. Three times a day he would go to the Lord in prayer, even when it was illegal to do so. The Apostle Paul probably practiced this as well as he had his morning prayer, his noon prayer, and his evening prayer, and perhaps others as well. A regular discipline of praying with perseverance. If you've ever traveled in the Middle East or know very much about the Middle East, you know that in many of those countries, the Muslim people, they have, have minarets, towers set up, and five times a day, those towers call forth through a megaphone, calling people to prayer. Now, while they have many false, wrong ideas about God, one cannot help but admire their discipline in their prayer life. Oh, it's good to set aside regular times to pray with perseverance. If you're not accustomed to it, begin with it once a day. And then maybe a couple times or a few times a day, you have set intentional times. Even if they're not for very long, pray with perseverance. And when you grow tired and weary, when you stumble and fall, when you drift off, give thanks to the Lord that He remain faithful for you. We pray at all times. We pray all kinds of prayers and supplications. We pray with perseverance. And fourthly, we pray for all the saints. When Jesus prayed in Gethsemane, he prayed for us. 
Father, if possible, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but your will be done. When Jesus prayed for the Father's will to be done, in essence, he was really praying for us. Lord, give me the strength and the courage to take their sin and carry it to the cross. Let me suffer their wrath that they deserve in their place. May thy will be done, Lord. And may my life my suffering, my death, and later my resurrection be a sufficient ransom for them all. May it cover their sin. May thy will be done. For in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4, we learn that it is the will of God that all be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Yes, Jesus was praying for us. And because of it, today we are so richly blessed. Tonight we drink not from a cup of wrath, but a cup of blessing. A cup with the blood of Christ shed for us for the forgiveness of our sins. Pray for all the saints. In other words, all believers, wherever they may be. Sometimes in our sinfulness, we have a tendency to become short-sighted. And again, we, we pray only for ourselves or, or those in our immediate circle of people. God invites us to pray for all the saints. Pray for all believers. Tonight, pray for the person sitting next to you, the person in front of you, the person behind you, the person on the other side of the church. And if you don't know who they are, don't be afraid to ask. Say, how can I pray for you? And if someone asks you your name, don't be offended. Be thankful they care enough to find out and to pray for you. Maybe at home, you can take out the church directory and, and work your way through it over the course of a time. And pray for each person and each family. Pray for all believers. Not just those that come here, but throughout the world. Pray for those who are comfortable in their faith and for those who are persecuted on account of their faith. Pray for all the saints. wherever they may be. Pray for those in our community, those throughout our country, those throughout the world. Pray for those who work in churches and those who work in secular places. Pray for all the saints. Pray that they may be strong in the faith, that God may grant them his armor and guard and protect them. Pray that they may speak words of gospel rather than harm. Pray that they would live their faith and persevere. But pray for all of them. One practice that might help is make a prayer list. It really isn't that difficult. Take a notebook or a sheet of paper, and as you think of people or things to pray for, you simply quickly jot them down, and then when it's time for, for prayer, remember those things and those people. Be persistent. Pray at all times, all kinds of prayers, and for all the saints. In verse 19 of our text, Paul requested that the Ephesians would pray for him so that he may speak the gospel clearly and boldly especially as he was about to stand trial before Caesar. Oh yes, pray. Pray for pastors, Christian teachers, missionaries, the staff at Rosebuds, for all believers. 
followers and their witness. That together we may speak not only with courage, but with clarity. And that the hope we have would indeed be communicated well and touch the lives and hearts of the people around us. Pray for all the saints. As we've studied Ephesians 6, certainly it is very evident that we are involved in a battle. Not against flesh and blood, but against the cosmic powers of darkness, the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. And like the disciples at Gethsemane, at times we may, we may grow tired and dull and drift off and tune out. But God again, as he equips us with his armor, gives to us his good gifts. You know, the gospel reading tonight, Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, in many ways highlights the disciples' failure, but also Christ's faithfulness as he engages in prayer for us. And in spite of his trepidation and troubles that he was willing to face, he prayed, yet not my will, but thy will be done. And because of Jesus' prayer, tonight we gather in this place and we drink not from a cup of wrath, but a cup of blessing. The blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Stay alert. Pray that you may not fall into temptation. And as you pray, pray at all times. Pray all prayers and supplications. Pray with all perseverance and pray for all the saints. And in it all, trust in Jesus. Trust in our Lord and rejoice in all that he has done for you. For he has fulfilled the Father's will for you. Trust in him and pray. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And at this time, then, we present ourselves and our offerings to the Lord. Please rise. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Amen. And for many who may be unfamiliar with our current communion practice, um, we're currently using these little cups, uh, the wafers in the bottom, so as you come forward, and you can receive it off the altar up front here, uh, at the foot of the step, and then spread out, and then I will say, take and eat, and we can all receive it together, and then flip it over is the wine, and you peel that off, and again, I'll say, take. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and salutary. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. 
On the tree of the cross, you gave salvation to all mankind, that where death arose, life also might rise again. And that by Satan, who by a tree once overcame, likewise by a tree might be overcome, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, the angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Closing hymn, hymn 878, verses 1 and 6. 